Pseudo legendaries are one of the best gifts of any generation. And what better off than actually comparing the new one to the closest one to it? Dragapult versus Hydreigon, two really, really strong stables of OU, but also in the ranked meta and more so even leagues. This is where we're gonna, of course, see which one of these are actually better, as we're gonna compare Dragapult and Hydreigon's move pool, stat distribution, and just overall theme in every meta they fend off against and see how they hold out. Hydreigon, which has been around since Generation 5, made a big mark on that tier, did fall behind Generation 6, and actually kept being a part of, you know, not really holding a candle in OU in Generation 7 either, but got new tools in Generation 8, which have made it one of the better wall breakers in the game, and it will absolutely remain so for sure in this generation. However, it has a steep competition, Dragapult, which fill somewhat of a similar niche, is really, really, really strong and a very worthy opponent of being who is the best dragon of the game right now. So without further ado, we're going to, of course, cover, like I said, their theme and find out which one of these two that really are better. And we're going to start off with the Pokemon introduced first, being Hydreigon. So Hydreigon, you're the poster boy of Generation 5, and quite frankly, Dark and Dragon combination is one of the offensive, most scary offensive combinations I have, clearly. It is only resisted by Fairy, and quite frankly, one of the things that makes this stab combination so well-rounded is that it is just unresisted in so many ways. Dark and Dragon really is pushing the edges of offensive merit. However, there are things to consider. It has immunity in Psychic, resistance to Dark, Electric, Fire, Grass, Water and Ghost, which is all fair, but it is weak to Bug, Dragon Fighting Ice, and very weak to Fairy, which really, really has been holding that Pokemon down so much. That said though, these weaknesses makes it very, very good for possible weakness policy set with the Dynamax, so always keep those in mind, like, yeah, there are weaknesses, but absolutely are somewhat predictable ones, and could be used very well for that very good reason. When it comes to stat distribution, it's quite fair, that it has good offensive stats, and you know, fair ball to use. 92 in HP, 105 in attack, 90 in both defense and special defense. Special attack, which is its best merit at 125, really does push the boundaries a little bit on this Pokemon, and the 98 speed here is, well, it's good, um, it's not the fastest one, and, and something that has been keeping this Pokemon down somewhat till this generation. But the uh, 98 speed here, very fair, quite speedy for this generation, and for the generations before it, it was alright. Um, it was forced at times to be a scoffer, you can use that now also, but at this point it works more as one of the best wall breakers in the game, like there is no competition, so always keep that one in mind. In its ability is Levitate. Levitate has good things going for it. While it's only one lev like one good ability for it, it doesn't have a variety. Levitate do allow it to of course be immune to earthquakes and routed damage, but also to spikes and toxic spikes and stick whip. So we're all the way to self rock which makes this Pokemon very good as uh, it is not a Pokemon that easily are hazard down or you know basically are willed down by switching in and out that often and consider this Pokemon has the ability to pivot it's a good merit to not be that much punished by coming in and out so overall Hydreigon's both distribution and its stab combination are one of the better ones in the game and our reason it is such a stable in OU right now so what did happen with Hydreigon this generation as of course two generations before it Really nothing much, but the thing is that really made it stand out was two moves, Dragon Dance and Nasty Plot. Hadrigan always struggled with not being of course speed enough or not being offensive enough to really push Pokemon's back. Well, with Dragon Dance it's able to pull that off to an extent, as Dragon Dance do make the scuffs it obsolete. It has a physical move with both Dragon Claw, Outrage, Iron Tail, Crunch, Head Smash. Uh, and even Earthquake, so it has merits. Though, that's not why I use Hadragon. Though it is a significant good set, I wouldn't say it's a priority set towards anything else because of Nasty Plot. Nasty Plot all of a sudden made his Pokemon a lot more offensively to be able to break through Pokemon that it hasn't been able to do before. That is, the special defensive beasts, that is, the likes of Sylveon, for example, or even God of War. Uh, overall, this is a Pokemon that just after this did a significant change to the offensive merits. 
because it can now offensively bulk through special defensive Pokemons naturally. Even Clefable don't stand a chance, and that's a very good thing. This Pokemon also had, of course, Dragon Pulse together with the likes of Dog Pulse and then Flash Cannon's coverage with Nasty Plot. But as of home released, I actually encourage people to drop Draco, go for just that Dog and Steel combination. As Roost and Nasty Plot is plenty, it also does allow it to offensively break through Pokemons that can't finish a Dragon off. It is just unseen really. Hydreigon really did make a big splash in the meta as it is very unlikely it will fall back to Yu Yu as it was in Generation 7. Because of this offensive merit, it is just pushing back the most everyday defensive Pokemon naturally. It does have issues, absolutely. The speed here still hold this Pokemon back somewhat, but be even able to, with the Pokemon's you speed, to break them through no matter how offensive they're capable could be. Is something that is just uncanny. Really, really great upgrade for Hydreigon. We also really have to cover one thing. This Pokemon gets Defog. That makes this Pokemon an absolute great hazard removal. While it isn't the most common set now due to Nasty Plot in a league aspect, that's a merit that is very rare for a Pokemon to have to be offensively really scary, but also have a defensive merit in Defog and being in combination with Levitate. There aren't really that many mods to pull that off. We basically talk about Flygon and Hydreigon, and that's, like I said, due to the Levitate being having immunity in Spikes and Toxic Spikes and Stick Web, it is a phenomenal asset. Yes, Hydreigon has, like I said here, some issues, and the Weasel Sisters stand out, but overall, Hydreigon has never been a bad Pokemon. Fairies hold it back in generations before it, but with Nasty Plot, that is necessarily no longer an issue. More so, of course, when it comes to Dynamax 3 vs. 3, as due to Witness Policy said, or even Nasty Plot to get with Roselli Berry, it wins those matchups to an extent it has basically no issues as it is faster than any fairy type right now, barring potential Scoffer, and that is very, very good. Um, the only Pokemon I can remember now that could potentially deal with it head on would be um, you know, a Slurpuff with an Unburden activated. Besides that, there is nothing to it. Hydreigon is a phenomenal Pokemon and should be recognized for it as it is just one of the best, if not the best, wall breaker in this game right now. So now to rival the new guy in town, the Galarian pseudo legendary Dragapult. A Dragon Ghost type, which is a good offensive typing, but also to an extent a really good defensive typing as your immunity in fighting and normal, you resist likes of bug, electric, fire, poison, water, and grass. And you have weaknesses in Dark, Dragon, Fairy, Ice, and Ghost. Which does mean that yes, you have a lot of weaknesses, but they are predictable ones, much like Hydreigons, that you see them coming to an extent. And due to not having a 4 times of you know, weakness, it is in theory bulkier than uh, Hydreigon to use the weakness policy set, which is something to keep in mind. Uh, when it comes to its stat distribution, it is not as bulky as a Dragon with 88 in its HP and 75 split on its defenses. So yeah, while Flare or frailer, it is still it's still rather bulky for being what it is. And uh, that will have its uh, stat distribution its offensive stat, which is 120 in attack and 100 in special attack. Which is alright. Um, definitely like um, pretty much like Hydreigon just flipped when it comes to its offensive merits. But what makes this Pokemon stand out is that 142 speed. There is really nothing like it, as it is just one of the speediest, if not the speediest Pokemon right now in Smogun OU, and will probably remain that as for the unforeseen future, as it just has that going for it. And when it comes to its abilities, a clear body, curse body, infiltrator, all of them being rather viable for different reasons. Curse body for me is really great, as um, for the Willow set with disable and sub substitute. That set is phenomenal as it does disrupt Pokemons naturally. Then we have Clear Body, which makes you immune to um, um, Stick Web and you know, Intimidate and whatnot. So that's really nice. And then you have Infiltrator, which breaks through subs and you know, disable through subs and Willow is through subs. It just is one of those things that stands out. Um, Dragapult is probably the only Pokemon I know about that has higher huge than say Landorus, and this because of its main sets are so easy to copy paste a team. It is a really good pilot Pokemon, but also is a good offensive blank check for some Pokemons. The combination of its typing is really good and well rounded, and uh, it's easy to see why this Pokemon that is as well of use as this. But as you guys know, a Pokemon is only as good as Move Pool allows it to be, so what do Dragon Pult do to make it so good? Now Dragon Pult has one weird issue that and that is its offensive move pool 
it's not as key as its special attack is. Um, just a quick mention, yes, we have Outrage and Dragon Claw, that is great. We even have Sucker Punch and a Priority, which is incredible to get with Fly and Psychic Fangs. But it doesn't have a proper Ghost Stab. The only Ghost Stab it has on its physical side is Phantom Force, which makes it a sitting duck and very easy to manage and sit or break through or switch into. It is a much different story than the free versus free meta where it just ravaged team due to that aspect. But for something this speedy to not be able to have Shadow Claw, yeah, it sucks. This Pokemon even gets Dragon Dance, it's, which is also one of key setup move. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, but that's not what makes, of course, Dragon Pool good, or in this case, kind of kind of shaky by ability. Its special pools to get a will likes of actually substitute and will o wisp and disable are the ones that makes this Pokemon stand out. It is a better Gengar with the sub disable stats. We're gonna cover that first. While it lacks Pain Split and Roost, right now at least, it is able to do something that Gengar failed to do, and that is snagging more efficiently disables and substitutes naturally. With Will O Wisp or Thunder Wave, you can actually make Hex double the power very naturally, and almost going first means that you can disable Pokemon that aren't able to hurt you, as you're a better defensive type than Gengar ever could be. Um, it does allow this Pokemon to bulk through a lot of matchups naturally, and just overall, it makes Dragon Dragapult really, really tough to deal with head on. Um, the special side is also something to keep in mind, as um, <clears throat> it has a really good special offensive move pool Shadow Ball, Draco, Meteor, and Dragon Pulse, to give it Hydro Pump, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt. Yeah, there's a lot of things this Pokemon does right. It gets Solar Beam, that's crazy. But basically, Dragon and Ghost are, as of right now, unresisted if you aren't a Bishop. That means that your film move usually only have to be Flamethrower, and you are good to go. Um, it's basically the Pokemon that right now uses specs to be able to break through, really. A special attack at 100 isn't as impressive, but we mentioned the weakness policy in the free versus 3. That is also a thing to keep in mind, as it does allow it to break through even better. But when it comes to leaks, however, what makes this Pokemon stand out is that, that high speeds here are allowing you to go modest versus 125 base speed Pokemons. What that means is that that 100 special attack becomes 115 in, in theory, and that is great. Uh, it is able to pull that set rather nicely, and the same thing we go with Adamant. Dragapult, while not having the diverse move pull as Hydreigon, still has one thing over it, and that is a speed tier to disrupt teams naturally, and, you know, potentially revenge kill right well. It isn't a wall breaker, it's designed to be a wall breaker, it's designed to be a... Uh, well, what is it? A revenge killer and, you know, a disruptor. And those two roles, it does not only naturally, but it does it absolutely the best right now in both OU tier, the free versus free, and league, because the speeds here to get it with a really good offensive typing is just too much for a lot of teams to deal with. So with comparing these two, I gotta say, the best part about this is that we are knowing that these are the expert, the ideal Pokemon at what they do. Dragapult being the best disruptor and revenge killer in the game right now. Hydreigon being absolutely the best wall breaker in the game, and even more so now with Roost, as it's able to, if you can defensively check something, then it can offensively break through it also. It's very uncanny to see a Pokemon just rising as Hydreigon has done, and uh, it should be noted for it. Uh, in a league aspect, I can see Hydreigon being so diverse, in such a broad move pool, and it does so many things right, it is just one of those really, really great Pokemon that nobody should be sleeping on. That said, yeah, my heart is where it's at. The 40% use of a Dragapult is for a reason. Dragapult's aspect of being one of the best revenge killers in the game and have a um, stab combination that is close to unresisted, um, it is just overall a better glue Pokemon overall. Hydreigon has the Wall Breaker aspects to it, but Dragapult is just better here. It has all the merits of a good Pokemon with a good speed here, a good move pool, and different viable set, a defensive set that works even though it lacks recovery. That is just... It's so weird that it works so well. And just overall, Dragapult for me is absolutely winner here as it does its role just supreme at what it does. It should go without saying though that Hadragon do feel one really strong in the league, and something I can see preferred over Dragapult, and that is a defog aspect to get with Roos, as it does pull a defensive role and hazard removal, 
which is something Dragapult as of right now really can't do, and whether he gets it from you, Tutor really couldn't say, but if Dragapult gets Roost, Pain Split, or Defog, then Hydreigon is outmatched when it comes to even that niche, but right now, the niche that Hydreigon has makes it, in my opinion, more overall more viable than Dragapult in the league aspect, but overall, due to that speed tier and being offensive enough to pull off a lot of different sets very well, Dragapult just does it for me. It is a reason people use it as well as they do and have a 40% usage in Smogon OU. That should be plenty to tell you guys that it just, it's just something else. Um, it is uncanny right now when it comes to Smogon OU and even League as it does become a kill leader in so many leagues right now. And uh, I couldn't tell you much for VGC, but I've seen it in VGC, which should be plenty. But yeah. It just does a lot of things right, and it's a reason it is the winner for me. But with that said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and do tell me, of course, as always, what do you think of these two Pokemons, as I do believe they're both, like I said, are experts at their field, and very easy to see why the other one would be preferred over the other. And with all that said, I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, see us next week for this matchup.